some of this is happening now. You, you can get connected to some folks that are, that are up and coming. These people are major players in what God is getting ready to do. Anna, if you want to capture this with the during during worship, this? I kept I kept hearing the words you sing rain R A I N, but I say R E I N I R E I G N. Yes. You sing rain, but I say R E I G N. And the Lord said, I'm coming to rain. Come a little closer. I am coming Come a little to closer. rain. Come While you closer. sing rain, I'm coming to rain. R E I G N. Oh, and my rain shall push everything that's in the way where I am not raining because I'm coming as a mighty wave. Then I saw waves come in. You know how with uh, like a tsunami, when the waves come in, I saw waves come in and just push things right out of the way because he's coming to rain. He's coming to rule. He says, you might be singing of R-A-I-N, but I'm, I, I am saying rain. I'm coming to rain. Of my rain, and so I saw the waters coming in a really strong and just push everything out wow. of his way. Who would, who would like a little bit more of that, huh? Well, a lot more. Praise the Lord. All right, well, praise God. Hallelujah. I really appreciate everybody coming. How many have been blessed already? Oh, the Holy Spirit's here. Thank you for the worship, ladies. It was just such a, a atmosphere, and He's still here. And Lord, we just thank you for your presence. We reverence you, and yes. I pray that uh, you would just touch people by your word and touch people through your anointing to people watching online. And uh, if you're watching online, we're not online anymore with that. Uh, oh, okay. Maybe Daniel can, I don't know. Stream it. Daniel can do it. He can, he can do it. And uh, hallelujah. And so this is going out through television. This little house here uh, in the nations is nationwide. And it's going overseas in Africa and the Bahamas and other places. And in, in multiple nations through the internet as well. And so we welcome everybody. Hallelujah. I was just amazed. Of, of how many people we reached just on our little prayer thing. There was like over a thousand people watching. Uh, and I, I don't know what it's up to now. And we couldn't even handle all the calls. We couldn't handle the, the prayers. It was just too much. And so we need a lot of prayer. So praise the Lord. God's making a way. And how many believe he's doing a new thing? Oh, man. And so, so I have a revelation um, of something that I believe the Lord is currently doing right now. And I believe he's dealing with a lot of things. He's awakening us to the power of his resurrection. How many have been celebrating, you know, since Sunday, last Sunday, that he has risen the same spirit, right? Amen. And he's awakening us. And, and there is a corporate man that's, that's starting to rise up. And, uh, and, and what are we going to do? We're going to start making known to the principalities and powers, right? Right something of Christ, of what he did for us on the cross, 
We're going to make known the manifold wisdom of God. And guess what? With the wisdom comes power. And uh, there's a new thing that's happening right now. And one of the things that he's been telling me all week long is, is that we're taking territory. And in some cases, I don't know about you, but in my case, there's been some areas that I've been a little slack in. Anybody got some areas where he's jerking the slack out of some areas in my life? Okay. You know, I've discovered that I'm not really in a position to take on new, new things if there's areas where I've kind of slipped. How many know that the works of the flesh are warring against the things of the Spirit? And uh, things can just close in on you before you know it. How many know what I'm saying there? And there's things that maybe you have done in the past, maybe uh, that God has called you to do, that you know you're supposed to be doing, but other things, for whatever reason, have just kind of gotten in the way. Does that happen to anybody? And he's telling me that... If we allow that to happen, if we don't continue in the things that he's ordained us to walk in, that the, the, the heavens can close on us if we allow them. But if we'll only just learn to look to the Lord, like, like it says in, in, in Corinthians chapter 3, what, what, did, what do we have to do? Just look and the veil is taken back, right? How many know what I'm saying? There's some, for me it was, I won't tell you all my stuff, but... <laughs> <laughs> I, I started playing the guitar, you know, that's one of my calls, is to be a musician and to be a psalmist, to, to work in poetry and things like that, and I haven't done that for years, and I've just allowed that door to close on me, and, and uh, oh man, and I could just tell you some other areas, if you let a man in one area, it seems like he tries to gain access into others, isn't that the truth? Yeah. And, you know, maybe I'm a little lazier than I should be. I'm just being honest with you, okay? And a little this, a little that. But I've noticed that if I'll step into one area and, and just take that ground back, that, that I can take other areas. How many know when the, the enemy comes in, he tries to take more area? Well, you, if you take one area back through the power of the Lord, right? That you can take back all these things. Take it back. He says it's time to rise up and take back that ground and take some new ground. We're going to take it all. How many want to take it all? And he wants you to know that he's empowered you to do this. We have this this power. And so that's what he's doing right now. He's, he's, He's preparing us to make some things known. He wants us to know even as we are known. How many would like to know some things that that God knows about you. And uh, he wants to undo some things that people may have said about you that aren't even the truth, that have closed you up. And how many had some of that? I mean, I, I can't tell you. So I could tell you so many stories. Maybe I'll tell you a few. But, but uh, he's releasing dunamis right now. Revelation, knowledge of his glory. Dunamis, uh-oh. And... Oh, I hope that didn't break. I hope that didn't break. Oh, man. And so yesterday I was on my way to come down to Modesto to support my friend Alan and, uh, and at the, the Star of David. How many were there? Yeah, a number, a good number of you were there. And uh, that, was, that was some good stuff there. Hallelujah. People were excited. There's a hunger, isn't there? And on the way, I was saying, Lord, man, it's almost Sunday. That was yesterday, last night. I need a message. <laughs> He started, he started giving me a revelation of dunamis power that I didn't really have a full grasp, but it was more. And it was something that I could barely even get a hold of. And I was driving down the road. I said, man, i got to write this down before I lose it. How many have lost things if you don't try to write it down? <coughs> the enemy will try to rob you, right? I tried, to, I tried to speak it into my phone and all this stuff, and... Oh, man. And then I said, Lord, I can't even do this. How can I verbalize what you just showed me? And he says, you can't. It's beyond verbalization. You know, and that's, that's what we have within us. There is, there, the kingdom of God is beyond uh, what we can exp- say, right? Yes. If you really want to know um, the things of God, it's more than just saying it. You have to demonstrate it. You have to make a way for the Lord to, to manifest it through your life, but it's through his power that brings a revelation of who you are in Christ. There's, there's a greater reality in every one of us 
uh, but it's beyond words. How many, how many knew that when you got born again, something happened to you, but you didn't have words for it, right? Yeah. And how many have ever had a miracle and, and, and you, you still can't explain it, right? But the only way they can fully be realized is by allowing the Holy Spirit to bring them forth. And so that's what we're talking about, releasing dunamis. And there's a purpose in this. And there's a purpose for his dunamis power that he wants me to, to touch on. And so I believe the Lord is trying to awaken us to the, a greater revelation of what it means, you know, where it says in 1 Corinthians 4.20, the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. And a lot of people like the power of God. They like to come and get touched. How many like the excitement in the atmosphere? Of heaven, right? It's pretty cool, right? We're having yeah. fun in here. Oh, yeah. But you know what? It's more than, it's, it goes way beyond that. Come on. Come and on. Uh, he's, he's showing me there's, uh, there's a way to reveal things uh, that releases the revelation of Jesus, that releases the glory of God, that no flesh can touch. And he's trying to take us into that realm, and he's giving me a revelation, a roadmap, if you will, uh, uh, for releasing his dunamis power so that you can start to make known to those things that have been challenging you who Jesus is and what he did for you. How many got some things that need to be made known? Amen. Right? Amen. And, and we can make a shift in other circumstances and, and take down some gates, right? What do you guys think we could take back some more territory? And so we're doing it and by the, by the glory of the Lord. And I tell you, I can't really explain what I'm talking about. We just have to release it to experience the fullness of it. Isn't that what Paul said? You know, I don't want to know anything among you guys, you know, in Corinthians, but Jesus Christ crucified and Jesus Christ, right? You can't really know Jesus Christ as he is until you know him in the power of, you know, of the cross too, right? We, the, the Holy Spirit... He brings that witness of the death so that there could be a revelation of his life, right? And uh, it's an awesome thing to step into. And so I have a, um, a verse I want to start off with here. And, um, and this, is, this is kind of validating what I'm talking about. And, and what I'm really talking about is apostolic grace, apostolic ministry. Let me think we need to... We need the apostolic to, 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 to advance the kingdom, right? Hallelujah. And so turn with me to Romans 16.25. And this is going to, there's some real revelation here. It says, now, Romans 16.25. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel... And the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. So please hear that. This is some deep revelation here. How many are of, of sons of God with power in here? Now unto him that is of power to establish you uh, according to my gospel. That's Paul talking here, right? And the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. Some heavy revelation there. There's a lot of things going on. A lot of things are being said. But is it according to the revelation of the mystery? Is it, is it motivated uh, you know, by the power, the dunamis power that we've been given. How many realize you have not been given a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind, right? Amen. And I don't know about you, but the Lord tells me that he's restoring everything. We're in the days of restitution of everything that has been spoken by all the mouths of the holy prophets since the world began. And Jesus fulfilled that in Heaven and earth must receive Jesus till the restitution of all things. We're, we're in the days of, of, of refreshing. We're in the days of restoration. How many would like to see some restoration? Amen. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you what, it has to be... Hallelujah. 
It has to be uh, according to the word. There's some joy breaking out in here. According to... <laughs> I'll just wait here a second. I'll, I'll start to laugh too. <laughs> okay. Now joy is a byproduct of strength too, right? Yeah. Hallelujah. So we can use some strength in here. I've seen this joy break out before. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. We need a little joy. I tell you, you get going after faith and it seems like things are trying to plunder you and take you apart and persecute you. And we just need that joy sometimes just to go forward. And praise the Lord. And so there's a real revelation here that he wants to bring forth. Hallelujah. Okay. Okay. Hallelujah. We were just talking about the joy, huh? All right. Now you're watching on TV. You hear all the joy. Okay. I'm not trying to make anything happen. The spirit. It's, a, it's an awesome thing when you get the joy of the Lord. Breaks change. Breaks change. Right. Hallelujah. Okay, I'm going to try again here, okay? Let's see if I can get through this. Okay. And so my point here in this verse, all right? hope you guys heard that. Go dig into this. There's some, there's some things that you need to know that, that isn't going to come any other way except the dunamis power of God, you know, uh, bringing us into the greater revelation of what we have through manifestation. Does that make sense? Okay. Let's look at the next verse. And this is Romans 16, 25. And it says, But now is manifest, is made manifest, by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. And so if you want to see these things that are already made manifest, there is a greater reality that's already here present to make manifest through the scriptures everything that's recorded <clears throat> to bring forth a greater revelation of who you are in Christ, what you have and what you can do. But it's through obedience, the obedience of faith that is going to come. And this understanding comes through faith. Isn't that what it says in Scripture? Hebrews 11, it's through faith we understand. That's one of the aspects of the seven spirits of the Lord is, is the spirit of understanding. And, uh, and it goes on to say, to God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever. And so the Lord's showing me that, you know, there is a great glory that's going to come. It's going to be revealed but it's not going to come through the flesh. There's the, you know, there to see what I'm talking about, to see the broader perspective of the Word of God, we're going to have to make a way for the witness of God, God bless you, sister, to, through His dunamis power to, to bring us into it. And I'm telling you what, there is a wave of glory that's coming, a wave of revelation, a knowledge of His glory that's coming to those people that will step in into what we're talking about. Actually, the way up is down. And I'll, I'll touch on that a little yeah. bit. The way up is yeah. down. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and, and it, all the glory belongs to Jesus. He died for us so that we could be one with Him through His glory, right? It's so transforming, but we can't touch it with the flesh. And unfortunately, uh, you know, there's a lot of things exalting itself against the knowledge of God. And a lot of things are puffed up here and there, but where's the fruit? Where's the transformation? You know, look at, look at our life. Are we the church? It's not the building. We've got to move beyond the building to the ecclesia. We are His ruling authority here on earth. You guys are the church. And is there, a, you know, how much of a, of a difference is there between our life and the life uh, demonstrated in the Scriptures? You know, in the New Testament, the book of Acts. In epistles, you see the churches, you see Paul, 
You know, there's a pattern there. And when the Lord called me out of the denominational churches that we were part of in the past, He says, "I'm calling." And He prophesied this over us, and He says, "I'm calling you out of out of the the old things." And uh, He's He says, "You're going to do a new thing." He says, "He says there's going to be a new thing. It's going to be of old, but it's going to appear as new." He called us. And he says, "There's a new thing coming. It's not going to be a religious thing. It's going to be a living thing." And, uh, and uh, not that we're anything. I believe he's doing this in other churches all over the place. There's a new thing that's springing forth. Yes, yes. How many believe there's a, there's a greater reality inside you that's starting to come forth? And yes. some yes. of you, yes. you know, I heard yes. Alan say he was pregnant, you know. I thought, well, that's pretty cool. <laughs> how, many, how, many, how many are about ready to give birth to some new revelation, you know? Yes. They're contending yes. for some new life. Yes. Yes. And there's a new thing that's coming forth and. And all the signs of the time and the sea, everything's coming together. Even the earth is shaking and things are waiting for the manifestation yes. of that which is in you already that, you, that has yet to be revealed. Yes. Good. Good. Hallelujah. God. And so, hallelujah. Let's just look at this a little bit. So when he called me out, he says, I want you to study the apostles. And we were, we were just real... Green in the Lord, not real green, but kind of green. green. We thought we weren't. <laughs> he says, you know, this new thing is going to come through the pattern, studying the lives of the apostles. So I started looking. And I'm just going to share a few revelations of what I've learned, you know, through the last few years since we've been on this, on this journey as ministers. And so um, turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Verse 18, and I don't want to, I don't want to overwhelm people here with, with you know this wisdom of God. I mean, how awesome is it that we can manifest the wisdom of God, the manifold wisdom of God, right? <clears throat> it's just amazing that He chooses people, like like me or anybody else in here. I, I can't speak for you, but when I got my calling, I thought, oh my God, how how could you ever use me? You know, all the things that I did, I'm not going to tell you, but I did some stuff, okay? And, and uh, you know, how could you use a guy like me? I couldn't even talk. My greatest weakness was being able to, to verbalize. I could hardly talk to my wife. As a, I had to marry her quick. You know, before she came I'm telling you. I'm not kidding you, man. I don't know if I should open this up here. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta you gotta you gotta move while the getting's good there. You just, <laughs> while the window of opportunity is there before before they find out all your stuff. Yeah. I, yeah. I was a carnal Christian, okay, okay. But she had some stuff too, and we're all we all have stuff, right? But I did have a revelation of the love of God. Thank God for that. I would have been a goner. So, okay, I better move on here. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't believe it. How could he use a guy like me that couldn't even talk? That was that was bound up in fear. I mean, really, you know. I mean, here we are. We're supposed to be the church of, of Christ, demonstrating the power of God, and we're bound up by another spirit like fear. Right? And um, perfect love cast out fear, it says in Scripture. That's obedient love. And there's just something that happens through obedience to the, to, to the Word of God. He's the author and finisher of, those who, of, of eternal life to those who obey Him, it says in Scripture, right? And so I, I was set free from fear by stepping out, even though I was shaking in, in that area of speaking. And uh, it's just amazing how God's power will come up upon you. I've shared this before, but I remember I was at a, a BMF meeting and a lady uh, was there, the, the wife of the president of the chapter of the Businessman Fellowship, I guess the Full Gospel Businessman's Fellowship, and a guy named Dick Williams, a prophet, prophesied over me that I was going to I was going to be a, a, a prophet and I was going to be a poet and all this stuff, and, and there was no way she could have, he, he could have known any of that stuff. Uh, God had, had, I had a real encounter with the Lord. It was, 
It was a radical encounter with the Lord. He spoke to me in such a power that instantly it produced a gift of poetry in my life. That's amazing. Instantly. And uh, I've been writing it. And I, anyways, I, I haven't picked that up for a while. Maybe I'll share some someday, yeah. Anyways, um, what happened is she heard that prophecy. She goes, I want to see some of your poetry. And I made the mistake of showing it to her. And next thing I knew, she had me preaching uh, in front of a big group of people in series. And I was shaking. I mean, I, I locked up. <laughs> he was laughing. <laughs> I locked up. But I went shaking, you know, because I knew God called me. And then everything, the power of God came over me. I lost complete sight of this world. I could not see anything but white light. And all of a sudden, it came out. And ever since then, I've been preaching. I've been talking. I've been sharing. And uh, I, because I have been given a spirit of power. And I made a way for that gift, that grace on my life to come forth. And sometimes we gotta, we just got to face those giants that are... That are, are are messing with us, right? Because there's nothing greater than Jesus, right? So, hallelujah. So, anyways, I was I was having an issue in the beginning. How could you use a guy like me? I didn't even want to preach. I was so shy, I didn't even want to be up here. But that's my call. Has anybody been plundered in the area of your life? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> You've been anointed. That's probably part of your calling, okay? Those, those areas, and, and that's just the truth. And I've been, I've been hit in so many areas by the enemy, but, but I've come to realize that I have power to take back all those areas and, and to make a way for God to move in my life and bring forth this witness that's beyond mere words. And it's a revelation that brings transformation. And we see it happen all the time, and, and God is increasing it, and He's awakening the church. You know, there's, a, there's an anointing on your life that you may not be aware of, uh, a, a revelation of His glory that's just waiting to be revealed, and there's a zeal to bring it forth. And it says in Scripture, of the increase of His kingdom and, uh, and peace, there shall be no end in Isaiah, and as a zeal, the Lord is going to bring this forth. And so he's trying to stir up a zeal in his body right now. But we're going to have to get fired up and go after these things. And realize you've been given a spirit of power. You have something inside you that to deal with, with the problems that you're facing and the problems your family is facing. It's just how tired are we of, of the enemy? How long are we going to put up with things? And are we the church, the glorious church he's calling? Are we going to allow the enemy to keep us bound in darkness? Or are we going to break free? Free, yeah, right, you're right. Hallelujah. And so he's, he's awakening us to who we are. And there's a giant within you. I said in the Spanish church, there's a tiger in your tank, you know? <laughs> or a lion in your tank, right? Aren't we supposed to be like the lion of the true tribe of Judah, right? Not like the world, not like who we used to be, but there's a greater reality in us, and it's beyond verbalization. It really is. The Word of God was meant not only to speak, but to live, right? Amen. To demonstrate. And uh, we need to make known some things. And God's about ready to shake things up in this planet like never before. Yeah. But guess what? He's chosen you. To do people just like all of us. People watching online. People watching. Just everyday people. And it's amazing. But that's how He's chosen to do it. And it yeah. says here in 1 Corinthians 1.18, for it says, The preaching of the cross... And this is, this, is, uh, this is where this power comes, through the preaching of the cross. How many like to preach the cross? Amen. Is foolishness, okay, uh, to them that perish, but unto us which are saved, it is the dunamis, the power of God. Amen. So there's something that's beyond mere words that come forth, a witness of God, when we preach the, the cross. Hallelujah. I like what it says in verse 24. And um, it says, But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, again, there's that word power, dunamis, and the wisdom of God. 
the wisdom of God and the power of God are connected. You want to see the wisdom of God, you need the power of God. And the Lord's showing me, basically, there's like a three-step process. First, you need to, to see, right? And then you need to know, and then you'll be empowered to do exploits. How many want to do some miraculous exploits? We were created to, to bring signs and wonders, to do exploits, to, to set people free, to bring healing, to reveal Jesus, who he is, right? Hallelujah. You guys are in the right place. Isn't that what it says in Daniel? Those that people that know the Lord shall do exploits. But if you don't see the kingdom, if you've been born again, you're supposed to be able to see, right? And how's that going to happen? The entrance of his word gives light, right? There is a light, Psalms 119. And, uh, but you're going to have to move beyond just seeing the word. You're going to have to know the Lord through covenant, through relationship, right? We know these things. And that knowledge operates through relationship. The gifts, you know, we're supposed to follow after charity, right? 1 Corinthians 14, 1. And, uh, and desire gifts, but especially that we might prophesy so people can be built up. But the point is, is the gifts flow through relationship. If you're seeking uh, the power of God, the gifts of God for the wrong motive, anything that's not according to the revelation of the mystery, I'm suggesting to you it's not going to be the authentic gospel. Amen. And, uh, and, and you'll see man puffed up. You'll see things exalted that shouldn't be exalted. And you'll see a lack of fruit. And it might be hidden for a season, but you watch. After a while, it will be made manifest, right? Yes, yes. And God's calling us, you know, to be the genuine, authentic representatives, the ecclesia, the ecclesia, right? Yes. And uh, that's who we are. And, and we got to get real with ourselves. We just got to, you know, he'll meet you right where you are and lead you right where you are to where he is if you're willing to believe him and trust him through the process. There's power. Uh, to endure everything, to believe everything, and to never fail. But it's through love. It's through relationship. And there are, there are things, I've seen so many things in my pursuit uh, uh, of the gifts of God that were misrepresented. I've had people pray for me that were anointed. And uh, I, one time this one person prayed for me. And when I was early on in my call, and I saw the glory I have a gift of discerning the spirit. I saw pink light coming into my mind. And I looked that up later on. I said, Lord, what? what's the deal with the pink light? He says, pink represents the flesh. And, and so you see things that look authentic, but if it doesn't come through relationship, it's different. How many know there's a difference? Yes, yes, yes. And that's what, he, that's what people need, love. That's what's going to draw people, the goodness of God. It's going to, it's going to bring a shift. And so, you know, we don't have to try to work things up. We, there is a zeal according to knowledge. And Paul said, hey, I bear, I bear the, the Pharisees. Uh, you know, I bear record that their zeal, they have a zeal, but not according to knowledge. But, but there is a zeal that God will bring about in your life according to knowledge, according to the revelation of the mystery. But you're going to have to trust the Lord. You're going to have to preach the gospel and let the Spirit bring these gifts forth. Yes. Bring forth these wisdom, the gifts of wisdom and all these things. And so it says here, um, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24, uh, it starts talking about our calling. And um, how many know that that we have, we have our ideas and God has his ideas. How many have learned that? Okay. <laughs> I thought ministry is supposed to go this way. I thought my business was going to go that way. He'll let you go that way, but, but he'll see your heart. He'll bring you to the end of yourself so you can get a revelation of your true self, right? And sometimes you can't see the truth until you come to the end of yourself unless you humble yourself. Oh, man, there's a shortcut. Humility, right? <laughs> How many want to take the shortcut? I took. I didn't take the shortcut. I had to come to the end of myself to see the new things start to spring forth, and uh, it ties in with the gold too. But there is there is something awesome that God is doing right now in this hour, 
and it, it is wisdom, but it's connected to power. And, um, and let's just go on to, and read a few verses here. 1 Corinthians 1, 24, it says, But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God, right? Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. That's a revelation. One of our friends that just came off the streets, out of the games. I mean, this guy was a, he's a real deal, man. You can see him. And he got healed. He got baptized in the Holy Spirit. Miraculous things have been happening. And he was in a recovery house this week in Lodi. And uh, one guy came and started uh, messing with the house, messing with the guys, knocking on the door, wanting to come in. And he wouldn't let him in because they have rules. And the guy started saying, well, you're weak, you're this, you're that. And it was a spirit working. And I'm really proud of this young guy. And you know what he didn't do? He goes, you're right. So what if I'm weak? I'm weak. He started calling on the name of Jesus. He started rebuking the devil. And guess what happened? That guy left, man. He ran off, man, to something. <laughs> and he says, you know, I don't want to go back there anymore. And I believe that's a word for the church. That, that how many don't want to go back to the old? They want to move forward into the new, right? And he says, I had to show them love instead of who I used to be and deal with things in the wrong manner, right? You know, and because this guy had a short fuse. And, uh, and hallelujah. Isn't that what the Bible says? When we're weak, Joel 2.10, then we are strong. I think that's where that is, right? There's a real strength. So, you know what? We just got to learn and discover who we are in Christ. And uh, it's an awesome thing. Hallelujah. Okay, hallelujah. <laughs> All right. All right. And so I have a few more verses here. For you see your calling, brethren. Now, I've learned that Christ is the head of all principality and power. Amen. He's the head to the church, right? Yes. And if we're going to flow in what we're talking about and seeing the dunamis power bringing his life to life in our life, we're going to have to connect to his calling. We need to have that wisdom. We need to have the revelation in the, in, in the knowledge of him, right? So that our eyes can be enlightened or illuminated so that we can begin to know through hope, right? Hallelujah. And I'm telling you what. Your inheritance comes forth through that. The power to do those things he's given you to do is connected to the wisdom. And, uh, but we need, to, we need to step into it. And we can do it. You know, we don't have to try to make things happen. That's right. That's right. That's right. You don't have to try to reach the, the world with human efforts, with programs, with, with all this stuff. And not that God can't use things. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, look what Jesus did. And he didn't have any of that stuff, right? Isn't it the same life, the same faith, the same spirit, the same word, the same father, right? And, and if we don't, we don't get beyond that stuff that everybody else may be doing and move into who he's created us to be and, yes, and connect yes. to that yes. and actually follow that, you're not going to see this revelation of his dunamis that brings forth this greater wisdom. There's a wisdom that sets things right. Come on, come on, come on, that changes come on. things, right? Yes. That makes a way where there is no way. Yes, yes, How many need to, to, to walk in the ways of the Lord? You can yes. walk in the straight and narrow. You can get on the narrow path, right? right. And you can't look at what anybody's doing. Come on, come on. You can't mimic, can't copy, right. you know, nothing. God has, you are unique. And God has a special revelation, a special call, purpose for everyone. But... If you don't get it through the revelation of the mystery, you're going to miss it. <laughs> Hope that's making sense there. Okay. And so it goes on to say, For you see your calling, brethren, how many, that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. He's chosen the weak things of the world to confound the the things which are mighty and the base things of the world and the things which are despised as God chosen 
And yea, the things that are not to bring to nothing the things that are. How many believe that's starting to happen? Oh man, why has he done this? So that no flesh would glory in his presence. And I'm telling you, this is just the truth. I'm not trying to work anything up. This is where the rubber meets the road. If it's, Amen, if it's not of faith, I don't want no part of it. That's right. Amen. If you get a call, you don't have to put, the, you don't have to put pressure on people. You know? right. don't, on. People are not our source. God is a source. He is a source of all of our supply. He's the one that makes all grace abound towards you in every favor so you have all sufficiency and abound to every good work. Amen. But we have to sow into those areas that he calls us to sow without expecting anything from anybody. Yes. God's the source. We're, we're just here to give. We're here to love. Amen. Right? And I'm telling you, we've been living in this. We don't have to work anything up or try to put... No, God. God does it all. And it's amazing. And he's got a plan for every one of you. And all you got to do is just say, okay, Lord, just show me. I'm going to go. I'll follow him. With simplicity. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. You're going to have to fight. And uh, you're going to get persecuted. You're going to get ridiculed. People will say things about you and lies. And how many has had some of that already? Just wait. More's coming. Okay. <laughs> but it's all for his glory, right? You learn how to count it all joy. Has anybody learned how to count it all joy? You know, the church in the, in the book of Acts is a lot different than what you see right now in this generation. But things are about ready to get shaken up and heated up. And there's, there's, it's, there's a rumbling that's coming. I've been talking about it. And you don't think I'm, I'm telling the truth. You wait till the, till the life of Jesus starts to manifest in a more tangible way. You're going to see the religious spirits coming out of the woodworks. And there's going to be some uh, shaking and some quaking and things are going to fall and things aren't going to be like they were. He's going to shake everything loose so that that, that which remains can't be shaken. We have a, a kingdom that can't be shaken. He's trying to establish us in that. But we got to lose sight of all the stuff that's religious, that doesn't have any life, right? And who's, who's just radical enough to go after that? He's calling us not to be showboats or anything like that, but, but to be, you know, bond servants, yes. bond slaves for Christ. How many is okay with that? Yes. I'm telling you, this is, this is where this, this dunamis moves through that. And that's not a very popular politically ter a correct term, bond slaves. Mm -hmm. But that's what they call themselves, yeah. right? How many want to be constrained by love, not to do things you shouldn't do? And all yes. these things, you know. Yes. Yes. Tell you, there's a greater revelation coming. Wow. Hallelujah. And so, let me just give you a few more verses here. Just being who you are in Christ yes. is following after the Spirit. That It will produce a wisdom in your life. And you'll go through the process of sanctification that brings forth redemption. You know, of him are you in Christ Jesus, 1 Corinthians 1.30, if you read on there, who of God is made unto us wisdom. You don't have to try to have wisdom. Just be who you are, and the Holy Spirit will guide you. Does that make sense? We just need to step into who we are and just believe we have it already and just follow the Lord. And once you start to step in, Step out of your way, step into his ways, you're going to see the witness of God. How many have had the witness of God? Yes. Where he's guiding you and showing you things that you could know no other. Oh man, it's awesome, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Amen. And don't let the enemy close those areas of your life. How many have just been in joy and doing things and have lost that joy? Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Maybe we just didn't know how to fight the good fight and keep the enemy off our back, right? <laughs> but, we're, but it's time to take back the ground. And to take more ground. We're going to take back territory. How many is with me on that? We're going to take some territory. Hallelujah. And so I don't know about you, but there's a fire in me that's starting to stir. That, that can't be contained. That's going to come forth. And, and uh, there, he's, he's stirring us all up for these things. And when we get hungry and thirsty for more of the kingdom than what we have in the world, we're going to see a demonstration. 
It's just that simple. It's just what's keeping our view, uh, uh, you know, veil right now. I mean, what what's capturing your attention? Anything capturing your attention uh, other than God, right? I mean, we need to be more concerned with what's going on in heaven and, and what the Lord's leading us to than what's going on on, I won't pick on people here, <laughs> on soap operas or, uh, or I'll pick on somebody. What's that one show? The reality show that my friend watches? Survivors. Yeah, go watch Survivors. <laughs> I'm sure it's a good show, but I don't know if you're going to survive when the heat gets turned up, you know? You know, you want to be a survivor. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is the truth. The Lord, we, we, how, how, how long can you really afford to let other things capture your attention? Those things that are magnifying those problems. You know, you have the answer to break through everything. You have the answer for, for other people's problems, you know. And, and God wants to bring that forth. And you're not going to see it except through preaching the gospel, releasing the, the dunamis power, and God will make a way. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's look at this a little deeper. I want, how, how many want to look, how many really want to look into the apostolic ministry? Okay. And so how many realize there's more than being an apostle or being a prophet? There's a lot of people, they say this, they say that, not that they don't have the calling, but how many are really you see in the fruit, the grace? And, um, and I'm telling you what, you don't have to try to be, to say you're this or that. You'll, people will know who you are by the fruit, right? You don't, and I'm not trying to knock titles and things like that, but not to make, make a big deal. There's no pecking order, right? And I think the pecking order is a problem, but the Lord, that's between people and the Lord. But, uh, you know, the apostles, you know, Paul says, I'm the least of all the apostles, right? Mm -hmm. And apostles are, are servants to everyone. Yes. And you'll see a little bit about the apostolic ministry here as we go along, uh, what, what he was demonstrating, what he was teaching in every church. And that was bringing this revelation of, of those kingdom realities that, that go beyond what we can say. How many is okay with that? Yeah. Okay. All right, 1 Corinthians 4. Let's read a few verses here. Hope I'm encouraging people. Yep. And uh, I, I've, got some, I've got so much, I can't get into all of it today, but, but here we're looking at the ministry of the apostolic. According to Paul, who was an apostle. It says here, let a man, verse 1, let a man so account of us. So in other words, we should be paying attention to these guys, right? As of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the ministry or the mysteries of God. So hear that. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. How awesome is it to be a minister through which we can participate and, and make a way for the Lord, his power to manifest and bring Jesus to life in our life and through our life, right? How awesome is that? How holy is that? Oh, man. And stewards of the mystery. Doesn't it say that we have this, uh, this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us? That comes by becoming a good steward. That's what he's been revealing to me. And um, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Oh man, that's a word. Faithful. Who are we faithful to? The one who's faithful and true. Yeah, we, we need to be careful with that, right? Faithful. Faithful. You know, the word is, is a big word. And I won't go there, but... Um, uh, that's a that's a big deal right there. How many believe we need to be faithful to the Lord yes. first? Yes. Yes. He's faithful to us, right? Yes. Get our eyes off of self and get it on yes. to, uh, you know, that relationship we have with Him so that we can be faithful stewards and minister in such a way that people can get real help 
and get transformation, right? Okay. This comes through being faithful and being a steward. And it says, but with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of a man's judgment. Yea, I judge not my own self, for I know nothing by myself, yet I am not hereby justified. But he that judges me is the Lord. Wow. How many believe that? that people are looking at us and judging us. That happens, right? And in fact, when we relate to people, if we don't have the heart uh, for, for, for revealing the, the, the heart of God through love, I'm suggesting you, you're going to be an open target for the enemy to, to, to tear things down and, and wound people. Right? We should always be looking to build people up and encourage people. And if you're not in love, you're, you're not going to be able to do that. Right? It's only through love that we can do these things. Right? Yes. And see these things. You're not even going to see these things that we're talking about except through relationship. The knowledge passes through relationship. How many have been hurt through relationships? We're not supposed to know each other after the flesh, right? We're, we're after the spirit. It's a powerful revelation. And we just can't look at anybody, you know, because we need to, we need to cut people slack. I'm not saying you guys... But, you know, I, I've been judged. I've been, I, there's people, other, I won't go, i got to be careful what I say on TV here. I've been judged by pastors. I've been judged by people, people that think they know, that don't know, that don't know the things that God has for me. And, and they try to, to lead you and guide you. And you end up, uh, you know, going places you don't want to go. Or they say things and they try to, you know, destroy character. And it hinders people. It hinders the things of God, right? How many has experienced some of that? And this is a huge thing. And I've experienced some of that, but you know what? God is greater. Love is greater than all that. He really is. And He is restoring things, but it's going to come through love. And so we just can't go there if we want, if we want to step into what we're talking about. Okay, I better move on here. Hallelujah. It goes on to say, Therefore, verse 5, Judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness, those mysterious things. I looked that word up, judge, in the Greek here. I'll just open it up right here. It means to distinguish, to decide mentally or judicially, judicially. Uh, whatever it is that God's calling you to do. And um, how many believe that he's guiding us? And yeah. he's got, we need, we need that discernment. We need that, that, that leading of the Lord, right? Yes. And we need to do nothing, judge nothing. Don't, how important is it not to think more highly than you ought to think, right? Yes. Yeah, and uh, uh, before the time, just be waiting for the Lord until the Lord come who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts and then shall every man have praise of God. What do you guys think? That's some heavy revelation, right? I'm telling you what, when you have the counsel of the Lord, the counsel that comes from the wonderful counsel, not the counsel from men, that's connected to the might of God, it, it brings you, when you have it, you start praising the Lord. How many have, have seen the, the God of breakthrough break you into some new things or, or answer a prayer or set you free? Oh, man. It's awesome. And we have it. But we can't go act like we have it when we don't have it. I mean, you know what I mean? We do, we do have it, but we can't, Act like it's manifested before it really is. I'll say it that way. What's that? Don't get the flesh on it, right? Yeah, is that what Lee is saying? Okay. Hope I made sense there. And these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes that you might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written that no one 
of you be puffed up for one against another. What's that? That's a word right now. That's a now word. This is what God's taken us into that place. We can't be puffed up against this group or that group. We've got to be for everybody, right? And not to think of, of a pastor or a minister above what Scripture reveals. All right? And uh, that's a big deal because how many believe that you can something else can start manifesting when we exalt men above the knowledge of God? And, and religion gets in and control and manipulation and all kinds of things, right? It's just not the same. And he is going to be shaking things up in the days ahead. This is a gospel that was laid, the foundation of the apostolic that the Lord is calling us to, to pattern our lives after. How many is okay to pattern your life after what Scripture reveals, right? Not after what everybody else is doing. Not saying that our vision for this house is the same that God has for that house down the street. We're all different. We're all unique, right? Okay. I think I'm stirring some things up here. Hallelujah. And so it goes, who, For who makes thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now if thou didst receive it, why doest thou glory as if thou had not received it. And, um, and, and that's a word. I know it's hard to understand that in the King James uh, language there. But basically what we're saying, everything we receive of the kingdom is from God, right? Oh yeah, I got to hurry up here. Okay. And, and we can't take glory for anything, right? We know that. That's just what he's saying there, basically in a nutshell. And I'm almost done here, so hang on just a few more minutes. I'm getting, I'm getting to it here. Hallelujah. And so, in other words, Daniel was here. Alan Garen was here. I was here. We all prayed for the lady with the tumor, right? She's watching right now. You know, whose faith was it? Does it really matter? It all comes from God, right? Aren't we all part of the same body, right? Shouldn't we glory when somebody else has a gift? Or we should be rejoicing for that, right? Because we need that gift. We need you. We need to make room for the gifts. It just doesn't matter. And when we, when we don't operate in that realm, we quench the spirit. We hinder the move of the Lord. And the flesh don't like what I'm saying. You're going to have to press beyond some things in yourself to get into what I'm saying here, you know. Sometimes you're going to have to go places and fellowship in places where you don't want to go. Amen. And, uh, and speak. <laughs> don't, don't be yeah, yeah, yeah. And we, we just got to put our agenda aside and, and not be jealous. And nobody can take your position right. in the kingdom. That's right. You get a revelation of who you are Amen. in Christ and step into that realm. The glory of the Lord makes a way for all of us, right? Yes. One accord, yeah, one accord. And so that doesn't mean that you have to, you know, I mean, every house has their, has their leadership and we've got to honor all that stuff, right? Yes. But when you hear what I'm saying, though, nobody can steal your place in the kingdom. I think the fear of losing your position or, or, or whatever it is that you think you have is what hinders the advancement of the kingdom. I think that's a big deal, yeah. Anyways, uh, you know, we, we just got to let God be the, the one that brings the resources and the tithes and all that stuff and not worry about it, right? Yes. How many can we, I mean, really, faith operates through seed time and harvest, right? If you yes. sow that seed and you do it through love, it's going to produce, right? Yes. You take your hands off of it and quit digging it up and looking at it and, and just, <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Don't eat your seed <laughs> and sow it. There is going to be an operation of the kingdom of God that brings manifestation of what we're talking about. And, and God has got to be the source. And that's what we do. We cast our bread upon the waters. And it says in Ecclesiastes, you're going to find it many, not many days hence. And it's usually not going to come where you think it's going to come from. God's not going to do anything according to the flesh. It's always... It's always in a way that's unique and it's special. 
and we see miracles happen every week and as it's not in doesn't doesn't mean he doesn't move through different means but we can't get our eyes on people we can't make merchandise out of people or any of that kind of stuff we you know god is the source Amen. and when you step into this there's such a rest there's such a peace you don't have to worry about anything yes. how many want to enter into that yes. isn't that what jesus says don't worry for tomorrow right yes. seek first the kingdom and his righteousness right and have an expectation, and through your expectation, you make a way for the, the, the knowledge of the glory to bring in those needs. And he meets you at the point of your need. Amen. People, I'm telling you, you sow the seed, and you, you just thank him for it. Just believe it, and just move on. And, but, but have that expectation that it's going to come. If you're not looking, you may miss it when it comes. Well, Okay, well, I'm, I'm, a, I'm not trying to preach on seed time and harvest here, but this is a powerful principle, and it works in, it works in so many areas. Okay, all right, I better move on here. Hallelujah. And it goes on here. Okay, I'm almost done. This is a lot. Can you guys, are you guys okay with, this is where the power comes, right? And this is like a, a pathway to the apostolic ministry. Okay, and so it says, now you are full now, you are rich, you have reigned as kings without us, and I would to God you did reign, that we also might reign with you. So that's all, saying a lot there, but apparently these guys have been in some places before, and he's wanting them to reign some more. What do you guys think? Yeah. 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 For I think that God has set forth us, the apostles, last, as it were appointed to death, for we are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men. We are, so it's not as glorious as some would have you right. believe. Yes. Amen. I'm telling you what, we go through some stuff here, man. I'm telling you, it's, it might look like things on the outside, but there are some things that happen in the background that we, we just barely make it, but we make it by grace. Glory to God. You know, and this is, it's not, it's not like you can't put on a front. We got to be real with people so they, they can, they can have real expectations, right? And, and not, and not exalt things. It's not a show. This is, I mean, but God, God will reveal and make things known through being real. You got to be real with yourself and with others before this knowledge will flow. How many believe that? Yeah. And it goes on to say here, um, for we are fools for Christ's sake, yes. but you are wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are honorable, but we are despised. And uh, even under the present hour, we both hunger and thirst, are naked and are buffeted and have no certain dwelling place. And labor, working with our own hands, being reviled, we bless, being persecuted, we suffer it. Yes. Being defamed, we entreat, we are made as the filth of the world and are the off-scouring of all things unto this day. Wow. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I've been through some of this stuff. I can't say I can identify with everything, but I've, I've been having some of this. How many have experienced some of this? But who's willing just to, to let God be God? Amen. And, uh, and to show who, who really God is and what Jesus did. And there is a cross that we have to bear, right? There is a road, a path we've got to, we've got to embrace, right? And, and, and we can really tap into the power of his resurrection. But we've got to have that transfiguration, that knowledge. Our mind and our soul has to be renewed, right? So that we can see this dunamis power come forth. It goes on to say, I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. I believe this is an our word. For though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet you have not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. Wherefore, I beseech you, be followers of me. 
So this is a pattern for all of us. How many want to pattern your life after what the foundation of the scriptures were, were laid out for? For us to follow after, right? I'm telling you, this is what the Lord's stem. Tell me the new thing is going to come. The newness of life is going to come through following the pattern of, of the apostles. How many is okay with that? Amen. For this cause, I have sent you Timotheus, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways, which be in Christ as I teach everywhere in every church. Wow. He taught this everywhere in every church. What do you guys think? That's kind of, it's quiet in here, huh? Oh man, I'm telling you. This is a hard message to the flesh. But how many really want to see the dunamis, to see yes, more yes, of Jesus? Yes, yes, I'm telling yes. you what, it, it, it causes you to rejoice. It's worth every price you've got to pay to get in this. And, you know, if you get somebody coming against you, you know what, that could be, that could be another Paul, you know, uh, or, or somebody, right? You know, Jesus died for that person, right? There's a wisdom that God has for them. And if you look for it through relationship, God just might give you a word of wisdom and bring the power to set that person free, too, so that they can see the light, right? And we got to get into this realm to sacrifice. But we can't get offended. We can't let the enemy tweak us. How many have been tweaked? Okay, I'll say it that way. Okay, recently, huh? You can, some of us are learning this right now. Things are going on right now. It says, now some are puffed up as though I would not come to you, but I will come to you shortly if the Lord will and will know not the speech of them which are puffed up. Puffed up. He wouldn't even know. He doesn't want to know any of that stuff. Any of that religious tradition, any of that stuff that's puffing things up, that's puffing up the man, that's, that's appealing to the outward man. You know, when you go to a service, are you drawn? Is it appealing more to who you are in the world or who you are in Christ? You see what I'm saying? And this is what we want. We want, we want the real deal, right? We don't want anything that exalts flesh over the knowledge of God. And, uh, and it's so much more glorious and so much more rewarding than anything you could ever receive, right? Oh, that's a heavy word right there, I'm telling you. And it goes on to say, oh, he didn't want to know any of them with their speech that was puffed up, but the power. He wanted to know the power. How many think we need to know the power? And it comes toward us as we believe. As we believe. That's, that's all you got to do is believe. Didn't Jesus say all things are possible to those who believe, right? For the kingdom of God is not in word but in power. He says, what, do you want that I should come unto you with a rod or in love and in the spirit of meekness? How many would rather have the spirit of meekness? Amen. Didn't Jesus say, you know, come to me all you who are heavy laden and overburdened and I will give you rest. You know, there's something of the anointing of the Holy Spirit that breaks you free from the oppression of the world and makes you aware of, of, of what He has for you, what He did for you. But you've got to learn, come and learn of me, for I am lowly and meek, right? And you should find rest for your souls, right? Amen. We've got to enter into the Lord's rest. Amen. And then we'll see this operation. Yes. I'm telling you, oh, everything that's already been given, everything that's already been done, and then you're going to start to know the Lord, and you're going to start to do more exploits. Like uh, There's going to be a manifestation of His glory like never has been seen on this planet that's coming. But it's going to come to those who are humble, those who are obedient and willing to pay the price and become a living sacrifice for the Lord. I think i got to close. Hope that blessed you. Oh, yeah. If somebody's watching and... and uh, Hallelujah. We give the Lord the glory. I'm so glad he gave me this message this morning. I woke up at 3.30. I was being attacked at night. But I got, I said, well, I'll just pray to the Lord. Maybe he'll give me my message. And he did. I got my message this morning. But this is what he put on my heart to share.
So if, if that's you and, um, and you want to receive uh, Jesus as your Lord, maybe you've been dealing with some, some uh, really heavy things in the world. You know what? There's a better way. Jesus yeah. is, is the way. Uh, if you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want to encourage you right now, just cast all your cares to the Lord. Repent of your sins and say, Jesus, I believe you died on the cross, that you rose from the dead on the third day. Come into my life. Save me. And he is faithful to do that. Call me, and we have a free resource we'll send you. And, uh, and uh, you know what? And if you need prayer uh, for healing, maybe I'll just invite Daniel up here to pray over any offerings or any tithes. I'll do that right now. If you have an offering or a tithe, Lord, I, I thank you for that. We pray a blessing on the gift and the giver. We pray that you multiply it back to the people. Anybody uh, online, if you want to sow, we thank you for that. You can do that through our website, or you can call the number on the screen. We pray a blessing on that, and uh, we thank you for that. And I'm going to ask my friend Daniel, who is a prophet, to come and pray for you, uh, you know, through, through the television. Is that okay? Will you, will you capture that, that stream? Is that all right, Daniel? I put you on the hook already for it. This guy has real grace. There's miracles that happens when he prays. Amen. It can happen through you too, though. Hallelujah. You know, before I do that, um, I uh, felt like I was supposed to share what the Lord told me about Sean, or about Sean, Stephen. Sean had been studying Sean Bowles as Sean came to mind. Uh, Stephen Powell was over at uh, Ramon's church last night, and... Uh, the Lord showed me something last night I had never seen before. And I think you were there when I shared it, weren't you? You were there. But um, some of you were there. I don't know if several of you were there. But I saw this angel come in the room prior to him stepping up to the platform. And this angel had a big urn, it looked like, on his back. And there was a strap that went over his shoulder. And I'm like, man, I've never seen anything like this before. Who is this? And this guy and all of the people that were in the room looked like jars. Different vessels, different jars, different, different kinds of things that would hold liquid. And I'm like, well, this is interesting. He began to go around and to begin to pour into every one of those vessels around the room the oil that was out of this urn. And when the oil went into those vessels, the oil changed colors. And each time it would go into a different vessel, the color would change. And I went, Lord, that is really strange. Why are the colors changing? And he said, because the anointing will come up and match with the gifting and the character of the individual who matches the vessel. And I was like, this is really interesting. I said, well, what's this for? And he said, watch now. And he, I saw Stephen come out of the room and he came out. And as soon as he came up to the front, he began to manifest like a like a burning torch in the Lord's hand, and he would begin to as he would begin to touch people around the room. They would begin to set a blaze by the fire when it touched the oil. And the Lord said that He's raising up front runners, forerunners, in this hour. And as the fire of the Spirit comes upon the front runners, they're going to set a blaze all of those that are touched by the anointing of the Father. So, the, so there is a serious seriousness to this hour in this, in this time frame where God is beginning to really touch the body of Christ and raise up the body to become what it is supposed to become. We have got to stop sitting on the sidelines and get in the game. So everybody who's watching by Facebook, everybody who's watching, uh, obviously here and anywhere else, if you're feeling like God is stirring you, and, it, and you asked me earlier if I was seeing something, but I didn't know how to put it into words. There, I sensed that there was a deep flow of God's Spirit operating in the hearts and the minds of different individuals. And some of these people, they've been going through just absolute nightmares. And in the natural, I mean, some, it appears like nothing is going the way you want it to go. Here's what was fascinating about what I, when I saw this. The Holy Spirit is under the surface doing a work that can't be seen or observed by man. 
and when he, when I saw this, I kept hearing it sounded like rushing water under the surface. And I'm like, what is with the rushing water? I'm hearing rushing water. And he said, I'm beginning to flow through the hearts and the minds of my people in such a way that when it manifests, the enemy who thought he was going to gain the victory is going to be handed a miserable defeat. <laughs> So there is, God is going to have his way. Though the enemy looks like he's just in sight of his goal, he will be cut off. So the Lord is doing a very, very secretive yet very powerful work in the lives of those who are enduring a lot of trauma and a lot of trial right now. You may not see it, but when you are on the other side of it, you're going to look back and go, now I know yeah. what he was yeah. doing. Yeah. And there's a reason why it's hidden work. It's hidden because he doesn't want the enemy to see what he's doing. <laughs> so Jehovah Sneaky is up to the <laughs> so, so be expecting the miraculous to take place. Because that is the order of the hour. The miraculous doesn't always come with a lightning bolt. The miraculous will come out of the deep recesses of a person's spirit where God is deeply at work in the hearts and the minds of his people. So when this starts to happen, it starts to manifest, you're going to know exactly what this is. So if you're going through the valley of the shadow of death, I always tell people, don't stop until you're out of the valley. So Lord, we just thank you for what you're doing in every single vessel. Lord, pour in more oil, more oil, more oil, more oil online, more oil for everyone in this building. Lord, begin to stir the hearts and the minds of your people to seek your will, your purposes, and your divine revelation for their lives. And as they do, Lord... Send the angelic to pour in even more oil, more oil. And Lord, bring the laborers to light them ablaze by your spirit. Lord, for any sickness and disease in this house, we just command that to be broken right now in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus' name. Every single sickness and disease was broken up by the cross broken by the stripes, removed from existence by the power of Jesus Christ. So we just command every sickness and disease to bow the knee to Jesus Christ right now. And I command sickness and infirmity to leave every vessel, every body, every mind, every spirit right now in Jesus' name. And Lord, we just declare it. We stand on it. We thank you for it. In Jesus' mighty name. Wasn't that powerful what he just shared? Hallelujah. How many believe he's going to reveal some new things? And what, he, what I'm looking forward to see is that new thing through all of you. And it's coming. Hallelujah. And so I'm getting excited, and so we're, we're just going to continue to, to make a way for the Lord to do that new thing. And so let me encourage you, if you've got a little slack in your life, he's jerking, let him jerk the slack out of areas in your life and, and start taking some more territory, all right? Yes. Become a disciple, become a lover of the Word, you know, eat the Word, breathe the Word, live the Word, you know, and, and, and just let him bring forth that revelation. The Lord knows how to bring it forth. Hallelujah. So thank you for coming. If anybody wants some more prayer, we'll pray. And I want to thank you for hanging out here and listening to this message. It was quite a long one, I think. Hallelujah. So praise the Lord. Come and pray for us next week in Sutter Creek and this Sunday. The Lord has got some new things happening this Sunday, too. I'm, I don't know what it is yet, but I know it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah.